Hey everyone, it's the Angry Honey Badger, and it's time for us to take a look at another champion build video. Today I'm playing as Quinn in the bottom lane as our AD carry, down here with Sona. We're down here alone because uh, everybody ganked mid and got first blood for their team, but we're going to be down here and kind of pushing them away for a second. But uh, we're going to go ahead and start off with build items and her uh, kind of her abilities. Cover those for people who aren't too sure about what they do. Um, as for what I like to take at level 1, I will usually start with a like, long sword and pots. If you're more comfortable with boots and pots, you can do that as well. But I do long sword and pots because of my runes and what I take for those. Those help me out in uh, the movement speed department. We'll get to those a bit, little bit later. But for now, we're going to actually get into a tiny bit of an engagement here. We've been poking at Blitzcrank a little bit. Um, he's going to grab Sona. I'm going to move over here and use some abilities and get him fairly low. His mana barrier is going to pop. I'm going to get exhausted and can't really catch up by a weird pathing thing there too. But Sona's going to go ahead and flash in, use the Q ability that she has. And then I think she had her uh, awesome damage string up from her passive. So she got the kill on that. So I'm going to pick up a quick assist. But we'll go ahead and jump into the abilities and all of that. So her passive, um, what's going to happen with this is Valor, which is that bird that hangs out with her. Her pet, I don't know what you want to call it, but Valor marks a nearby enemy um, for 4.5 seconds, and if Quinn attacks that, then um, you'll see it. It's that bullseye that pops up on people, or on minions that can do that as well. You're going to deal some extra damage. Um, it's kind of awesome, actually. So it procs really well. You basically shoot twice. It's kind of badass. So um, having a little bit of extra damage early is kind of awesome. You'll see this go off, and you'll see when it procs on certain abilities... It's going to proc pretty much every single time um, I get to my other things, but we'll go over that in a second. Anyways, so her Q ability is her Blinding Assault, and that's what I typically take at level 1, and usually we'll max this one out first. So we have that. Um, what happens with this is Valor will fly towards an enemy in a line, and when it collides with an enemy of any kind, it's going to deal some physical damage, and then it is going to um, blind them for one and a half seconds. So it's kind of nice that you have a little bit of a blind built in. You can get into 1v1s and kind of negate some early damage. And it does some fairly good damage too. So that would be your Q ability. Now, when you switch forms, because she does turn into Valor, or Valor replaces her when you use your ultimate. When you're in your ultimate form as the bird, um, which is called tag team, that's your ultimate. When you're in that form, um, Valor uh, is going to deal uh, some physical damage and um, you're going to blind them still for 1.5 seconds when you use that when you're in quote-unquote bird form. You might hear me call it eagle form because, I don't know, I just, I, don't know, I just like to call myself an eagle. Anyways, we're getting into a little bit of a fight here. Blitzcrank taking some damage from me. Going to be able to pick up a quick, easy kill by using my E ability and my Q on him and shooting him a couple times. So, quick, easy kill happening right there. Alright, so the next would be our W ability. That's our heightened senses and um, basically passively attacking a uh, target with that uh, vulnerable target blah 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 um, is going to give you some bonus attack speed for three seconds. When you activate this you're going to reveal your surrounding area for two seconds. So like a little bit of a built-in clairvoyance. Really good for uh, checking bushes and all types of stuff. And then when you are in the active or actually then passively, it speeds up your attack speed. So that's kind of awesome. And then when you are in bird form, that's just going to still do the same thing and you're going to view the surrounding area. Um, that first trip back, I did finish off that long sword into a vampiric scepter, which is what it typically would go into. And then I picked up a BF sword because that's going to be going and it's going to be teaming up with that vampiric scepter because we're going to actually build a bloodthirster first as our very first item as our our uh, the damage is what we want early on i've seen a lot of people lately uh, especially with the slight changes that have happened to blade of the rune king i've seen a lot of people buy that as their first item i can understand what you want from that and i can understand why you would want to do that but i don't actually like that it doesn't give you enough damage to help you with your other skills it only gives you 25 i already have more than that with just the bf sword so um, it gives you some good attack speed, but she doesn't really need it based off of her kit. So on Valor, or on not Valor, obviously, on Quinn, um, you don't really need it right away. It's a good item to pick up later on, but not first. I don't think it's a great first item. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off that Bloodthirster now and have the first part of my boots. And uh, we're going to be having a lot more damage than anybody who builds a Blade of the Rune King. So if I get any 1v1s, they might be able to shoot at me quicker. But I'm going to deal more damage and I'm going to lifesteal more, so... It's not going to matter. I'm going to win that fight. So, that's why I don't go Blade of the Rune King first, because I know somebody would ask why. So, next we're going to go over her E ability, which is her Vault. Um, Quinn's going to dash to the enemy, dealing some damage, and then the uh, she's going to slow the target 
by 50% for two seconds. It decays over two seconds at least. Um, this is kind of awesome every time you do it. It's great gap closure and it's good for getting away. It's combination. Now, if you use it to get away, you got to jump to them first, which can kind of be, you know, deemed as not necessary or going to be good for you. But they'll be slowed and then you will also jump off of them when you use it so then you can get away. So if I can get uh, targets in range, um, that's what I'm going to be doing and that's how I'm going to be killing people. So uh, Vault is really fun for picking at people in lane too if you can get them close enough. Because every single time you use Vault, you pretty much are going to uh, proc your passive right away and shoot at them those two bolts that are going to deal that extra damage off your passive. So it's a really easy way to not only deal some damage, but then if you just shoot at them once right afterwards, they're going to pick up some extra damage. So it's a really good poking tool in lane to really harass and hurt a lot. And so that would be that. Now, when you are in that, or when you use that ability, which is your E, when you use that when you are in your tag team, um, when you're as your bird, uh, you're going to dash at the enemy dealing um, some physical damage and slow the target. So that's what's going to happen. You're not going to jump back. Because when you are in your ultimate form, which is your R ability, um, which is called Tag Team, which we've pretty much covered already, um, when you're in that, you're going to move a lot faster, and then you move into melee. You are not ranged at that point, so if you want to jump into bird form, you got to be prepared to want to do damage. you got to jump into battle, because you're going to be a uh, melee champion at this point, and then you're going to gain 80% bonus move speed, and it gradually decreases. But uh, bird form is pretty epic for chasing. And it's just pretty awesome in general. When you jump out of it, it will deal some damage. And, uh, yeah, as uh, she leaves that form, that will happen. So, um, getting a little bit of a fight here. Going to shoot at Sejuani, but the Sona is going to pick up the KS. If you've uh, noticed, Sona has a lot of kills this game. Um, so that's going to happen, but don't worry about that. Going to still be doing fine. At least we're getting assists. <laughs> All six of them we have so far. Gonna keep building. The next item I'm building towards is actually gonna be an Infinity Edge. Gonna be picking up even more damage. Um, Quinn, like I said, she doesn't really need a lot of attack speed early on in the game because of the way her uh, passive works and her W giving some passive attack speed and just when you proc stuff. So, uh, don't really need to worry about attack speed too much, uh, too quick. So, uh, gonna come over here try to help Katarina find the Ari who's ulting away. I'm going to run into Blitzcrank and Tristana. I'm going to try to poke at Tristana with a few of my abilities, but then I got Fiddlesticks from behind, which then he's going to fear me for six to seven or eight months. And then we're going to try to get away while we are exhausted. Luckily, Blitzcrank missed quite horribly with that grab. I'm going to be able to retreat in bird form. I'm going to call it bird form. Don't get mad. I know it's tag team. Going to retreat in bird form, and uh, I'm never going to leave it right away as long as I can use it because... Uh, I'm lazy, but then I will leave it now because I wanted those minions to die. Anyways, I'm going to move back up into the fight because my team is now grouping back up. I'm going to go ahead and jump back in here using my E ability to kill Blitzcrank and then shoot a little bit and then that Q at the Fiddlesticks and pick up a nice kill. So um, that Q does really hurt. Not only does it blind them, but it also does some great damage. There's some unique things you can actually do with that too when you are in a team fight. Um, it can hit multiple enemies for the blind, so if there's a group of them... Let's say you're fighting one of them. I think I do this later in the game where I shoot it off in a direction I'm not actually paying attention to, but I go, I do it to try to help the uh, teammates by blinding the other people around me. So that's something you can kind of do with that ability. Um, I think it happens at one of the last team fights. I'm fighting Ari, and I shoot it towards the rest of the team while I solo Ari. So going to get into a little bit of a fight here and get stuck by that uh, alt of Sejuani's. Going to pick up an assist on the Blitzcrank and try to move in here. And, uh, yeah, shoot some nonsense and try to pick up a kill on the Sejuani. And then we gotta obviously need to kill Tristana because she's kind of a dick. That's just how I put it. And Wukong's gonna pick that up nice and easy. Unfortunately, Ari is gonna get away, but nonetheless, that was a pretty decent team fight. We're 5 0 and 8 right now. And we're farming all right. So we're gonna keep doing that. We're gonna have enough of this next time when we go back to finish out that Infinity Edge. So we'll uh, have a lot more damage. And when we crit, it's gonna hurt a lot because of that bonus crit you get on top of Infinity Edge. We did finish off our boots into attack speed boots. Now here's the part where I'm getting kind of chased a little bit where um, I luckily didn't have to do it, but I was prepared to use my ultimate to get away. It's a really, really good way to run around. I actually have some really funny... Actually, I'm going to get caught, though, by them because I wasn't paying attention. But it's actually kind of funny. I've gotten away a few times, like, cross-mapping it through jungles using uh, kind of using your ultimate while a whole team tried to, to chase you. So um, it's really, really good for getting away. You become ridiculously fast. You can also catch up to team fights really fast and use it. One thing I will say about your tag team is um, you gotta be careful. I know most champions, when you use an ultimate, it's because you're in a team fight 
and you want to do maximum damage. It's not always necessary for you to jump into that form to deal maximum damage. It's not usually smart in a big team fight to jump in and use it right away. It's really good for cleaning up the fight or repositioning yourself if you need to in a fight. So um, my teammates there kind of got in a pretty early engagement before Sona and not got here. So I'm trying to back off instead of jumping in and dying right away. Now I will move in with our Nautilus tanking this and kind of disrupting the fight and Sona. I'm gonna jump in here, do some pretty good damage to the Ari. Unfortunately, targeting got weird, but and Nautilus is gonna pick that up. Gonna pick up, though, the kill on Sejuani, and I'm gonna try to chase after Blitzcrank, but unfortunately, I got pushed on the other side of the tower, and he is going to flash away, so I will not be able to pick that up, so. Uh, but not bad, picked up a kill and an assist, and uh, we all got away, so that's gonna be good for that. So, we have our Infinity Edge, we have our BF Sword, and we have a little bit more attack speed because we are building towards some other items that we're going to go and get in a second after we get this dragon, but uh, that is going to happen. We're going to murder Sejuani, I think, real quick, because that's necessary, and then I think I'm going to get feared and silenced and die. So, yeah, good fight by them, though. That was pretty smart. Anyway, so her abilities, like I said, I usually do take her Q ability at level 1, and that is what I typically max out first. Now, I've seen people max out her W and her E, either second or third. Um, they switch back and forth. I've tried both. Um, I can see the advantage to maxing either of them out both. So um, figure out which one of those you want to max out second, either your W or your E. Obviously, you take your ult at uh, level 6, 11, and 16. Um, here, my team got murdered, and I need to just kind of hold on while Wukong's doing something over there. Um, so we're gonna just try to make sure they don't get in here and take it in Hib or the other tower. And, uh, so that's her abilities. Now, as for her runes, what I like to go with is actually attack damage or armor penetration marks. Just kind of comes down to a personal preference. Um, armor seals, magic resist per level glyphs, and then typically I would take attack damage, uh, quints. But I've actually been using movement speed quints on her, and I actually like them. They're really good early on, and I don't know. I just... I just like them on her for some reason over most AD carries. So, uh, But movement speed quints are never bad on anyone, so it's like getting boots won. So if you want to try it out, give it a shot. I really like it a lot on her, so that's what I'm going to be doing. Now, the last trip back to base after we did clear that dragon and we did die then after that, um, picked up a zeal, which is going to give me more attack speed, some crit chance, and movement speed, and then I also picked up a, uh, some more items. Holy cow. We're gonna do a fight. So, there I just shot off my bird while Sejuani was poking at me at their team to try to slow them down. Here I'm gonna focus back onto Ari, and when you do proc that passive, it does hurt, as you can see her explode instantly. And I'm gonna pick up a kill on Sejuani, so, uh, quick little kills happening, uh, right there. A little good team fight. We had to play that one pretty smart and grab fiddlesticks. If we allow him to alt in on us, that will be devastating, so we have to force to or focus him quite, quite quickly to get rid of him so we don't, um, get killed by him really fast because that fill sticks is uh pretty hurtful if you know if you know what a good fill sticks alt can do it will destroy your whole team so you gotta be careful about that we're gonna go ahead and pick up those first two little things in their base that that uh that tower and then that inhibitor and then we're gonna make beeline it straight to baron so we can try to get a quick baron in here now they're gonna be respawning fairly quick so we need to come do this wukong and katarina are a little bit behind us right now so we got to start this up and start doing the damage that we can to it so we can get this before they are all up and ready to come run at us. As you can see, Blitzcrank is already trying to make his way over here. So is Ari and Triss. They probably, well, they don't, it doesn't appear like they have it warded since we haven't pink warded, but they probably know that that's where we want to go. Luckily, we are going to be able to pick this up just real quick right before they uh, get here. So um, quick Baron. And uh, we're going to go ahead and retreat because uh, a couple of us are missing the health to get into another fight. So... That's all good in the hood. So, I'm going to go back to base now and take those last two items that I did buy and team those up to make a static shiv. Super fun stuff with that item. Um, really just a good attack speed crit chance item, so you get a little bit more crit chance, some bonus move speed, you got that shocky damage, which is always awesome to deal some more damage across the team. And then I also did pick up the first part of my Blade of the Ruined King. Now, at this point in the game, I would suggest it will be better to get... Um, their team's starting to get a little bit tankier, so the percentage damage is going to be more rewarding. And then we're going to get more crit, or not crit, we're going to get more lifesteal, which is going to be a good thing as well. So now would be a good time to pick up your Blade of the Rune King, which is what I'm starting to build toward. Not sure we're going to actually finish that off, though, before the game ends. And that would be our fifth main item. And then after that, you'd have one item left. Going to try to murder off that guy real quick, which we're going to get rid of. Good move in here, go for the Ari, murder her real quick, because that's what Quinn does, murder people. Flash through to try to help them out, but don't worry, they're already dead, because we're going to win this game. 
So, that's pretty much the game. But uh, as for the very last item, there's a couple weird things I actually like to do. Um, a frozen mallet is a good way to end her since she kind of does a little bit of solo brawling fairly well. You can do a frozen mallet quite well, actually. Um, Guardian Angel's always another standard choice that's pretty awesome. So those are the last few items I'd round up the build with. As for Masteries, standard 80 carry stuff, 2190. But that's going to be the game. If you have any questions, you put the comments down in the comment section. But other than that, I'll just see all of you guys in the next build video.